Today we're going to shade Muscles using Stabilo Carbothello Pencils and Prismacolor New Pastels. These are both chalk-based pastels and I have the colors that I'm using here. So we're going to be using the white, which is 100, the yellow, which is 205, the pink, 311, the red, 305, purple, 385, a darker green, 585, and the black, 750. With the Prismacolor New Pastels, I'll be using my white, the yellow, more of a pinkish red, an orangey red, purple, the darker green, and the black. I also have a kneaded eraser and a tough stuff eraser to erase out details, as well as a graphite pencil. So first I'll begin drawing out the muscle. Right now I'm working on a vellum that's on top of a drawing paper that has a skeleton on it. So I'm just gonna begin by drawing out the trapezius muscle, which is gonna to attach to the base of the neck. So I'm gonna draw lightly. We'll have that connect right below the scapula. Let me show you some tips on the pastel itself, okay? So first I'll begin by using the red, the 305, and I'm gonna start just shading with that so you can see what it does. You wanna shade using this kind of crosshatch method. Keep in mind that if you cover everything and you attempt to put white on top of it, it's not gonna really go white, it's just gonna get milky, okay? I have a tissue here just to clean up some of the pastel that goes on the white, okay? So a tip would be to shade and leave the white of the paper open, okay? So let's say I wanna shade from this side. And then I'll just kind of feather some of that. I'm gonna give it a little bit more concentrated on the edges. I do rotate my pencil every once in a while just to maintain a little bit more sharpness. And then I'll just kind of feather this out towards the center. So if you want something to be a little bit lighter, feather that out, okay? Like that, all right? Next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of my pink in there. So again, this is the 311. We're gonna add some of this pink into the red. to make it a little bit more rich. And keep in mind, this pastel will build up, and so you'll need to kind of lift up your paper and let it fall down, okay? Bring that pink a little bit further. I'm gonna go into my yellow, okay? Just to get a little bit more of the richness in there. So a little bit towards the center here. Bring some of this. So very minimal, just kind of filling some of that. Then we're gonna take the white, and instead of working the white from the outside in, we're gonna work it from the center out. What that does is it prevents, like if I do this, I'm gonna pull some of that red with me, right? So instead I'm trying to keep it lighter in the center, and then kind of pull out that way, just to kind of soften this out. Sometimes you'll need to kind of clean that white but that'll be how you get those lighter variations. The white also blends a little bit more. So I'm just gonna kind of feather that out. It's looking nice. From there, I'm gonna take a little bit of the purple and get deeper towards the connecting ports. Now again, I'm just kind of doing this motion here, okay? We're gonna do the same thing coming from this side. Gives a little bit of that ombre effect. You could pull a little bit further. Now, because it's really red, we're gonna neutralize some of that with some green. So with this one, same thing, we're gonna do these kind of hatch lines. Hold it on the back side of the pencil, light pressure. So you don't wanna go necessarily all the way to the base, but kind of midway through here, just add a few of those lights just to neutralize 
some areas of that red. I'm gonna go back to my 305 to add a little bit more of the lines. So again, we're gonna kind of do this method here. First, we were shading. Now we're gonna do the lines, okay? So I'm kind of feathering some of those in this way. And we'll kind of feather some of these here. Then you need a little bit of black. Now I'm talking a little bit, just for areas that you think may get a little darker. So very light pressure here towards the base where that purple is, if you needed it to get darker. Okay, let's try the same method with the sticks, okay? So we're gonna start off with our orangey red. Same kind of cross hatching, okay? So I have a little baby stick here, so we're gonna just make sure we get that where we need it to be. It's a little bit rougher of an application than the pencils. Same thing on the other side. And just kind of feather that towards the center. We're gonna go into our pink. With the sticks, they have corners, but as you use the stick, it wears down the corner. So just make sure where you're placing it is where you want it to be. So we're gonna fill some of that red with this pink. Again, I'm just doing this motion here. We're gonna go into the yellow. Make sure your yellow's not dirty. So again, having that tissue for anything bright, bright colors like white, yellow, you wanna clean those off before you use them. And then since I already did it, I'll just clean that off there. We're gonna go into the white. Start in the center, so just make sure your white is clean. We'll give in the center. Now this white is more concentrated than the stick. So a little goes a long way. I'll just clean that off now. I'm gonna go into some purple at the base. Bit of green to neutralize. Now, with these, they're pretty strong, so I may need some more red to cover that purple. So I'm actually going to go back to our red. Just scrub a little bit into the base there. So we're just you know, scrubbing a little bit harder there. You can kind of see how that white gives it more of a milky effect. So we may need to toggle a little bit more, get some of that yellow back in there to make it a little bit more vibrant. And then again, only use that black if you feel like you need it towards the base. Now, because this black is gonna be pretty strong you wanna go back over it with the purple and kind of tone it down. So I'm doing kind of little micro circles just to kind of smooth that out. And then we may need a little bit of red because that black is super strong. So don't put too much. You can see I have a, a lot there. So I'm gonna go back over that with some red. So less is more with these sticks. You can see how this one turned out a lot darker, okay? So easy on the black if you put it at all, okay? When we're applying this here, we're gonna start off with the red. And again, when you're using the pencil, just a little tip for you, 
make sure your outline that you're drawing is not heavy. You know, so if you're drawing out that with pencil, you don't want that to be heavy because that pastel is gonna show all that graphite. So whatever you're drawing is, you wanna keep it light. And then I would take a kneaded eraser and just tap and lift some of that out before you start. That way when you do the pastel, we're not picking up on that strong outline, okay? So I'm gonna take this kneaded eraser, just gonna tap it. My line was really light to begin with, so probably don't need to tap much of that. I'm gonna go ahead and draw this out. Now in between the muscle, we have a connective tissue called fascia. So you're gonna see some white in between. The trapezius is a neck muscle that's on both sides. And the striation, the pull of that muscle goes like, like what I'm doing right now and connects at the top of the scapula. So there's not much cross hatching when we're doing this because we're doing more of a, a you know, directional pull for the trapezius. Okay, now I might want some areas that I want lighter. And so if I accidentally covered some of those areas, I may want to take a tough stuff eraser and just lift some of those areas back out, knowing that my white won't just, you know, show itself there without lifting some of that out. Put a little bit of white in there to save that for now. That muscle gets a little bit lighter, okay? You keep on going with this red. You wanna save that connective tissue, that fascia. We can add some of that pink into there. I'm just gonna kind of pull my finger from outside in and soften some of that, and then I'll wipe it. Just softening some of these edges here. That'll give me the ability to come in with the white Kind of transition that fascia out a little bit more. I'm gonna go in with some purple. Now we would be getting into the um, latissimus dorsi over here. So as you're working, you can kind of work multiple areas at a time and go, go ahead and go into the, the lat here, which is the latissimus dorsi. We can shade cross hatching, but ultimately we really wanna get the direction of that line too. So it's a little bit more kind of like a cross contour, if you will. And then this is gonna connect you to more fascia down here. And that's wrapping up like that. So we'll just stop that one there. Because what I can then do is fill in some of these pockets Darken some of the muscle. Now we can get into some of that yellow. Now again, working on this Duralar, um, it's a lot different from drawing paper. It's a little bit more waxy. So it's not gonna allow as many layers as regular drawing paper would. So you have to be very selective with your color. Otherwise it'll just kind of slide and resist you. I'm gonna take a little bit of this green to kind of neutralize these colors just a little bit. Now I could easily go into the sticks. It's the same thing. I just think the sticks are actually brighter than the pencils, just kind of nice. Okay. Again, if you need any black, put the black in there. This is just to help you kind of understand how to get that pastel, a bit of color mixing. You'll notice that with the pencils that it kind of strips off um, some of that color, whereas with the sticks, it'll actually stick a little bit better to this um, vellum surface here, okay? For the fascia, I'll still put white. Just make sure that you don't have too much color down. What'll happen is, you'll just pull all that color into the fascia. So we really want like a softer transition. 
putting your pencil. Use white in there. Um, in some instances, you might see a little bit of gray happening as well. So as you get to the vertebrae, you may introduce a little bit of, let's say we do white, which is hard to see, I know, because we're against the white paper. But as you start to do the vertebrae, you can introduce a little bit of black into that white. And then you can take some of the white and kind of soften some of that up. The white, having the white first just kind of provides that base for you. So as we get into the skull, we have that, um, that fascia around that connective tissue around as well, but just to kind of show some of the shading, what you might want to do is go ahead and lay down the white introduce a little bit of black into the base of the skull. Now I'm doing very, very light pressure. Just to show some of that shading, we'll go back into the white, kind of cross over that. That'll help kind of blend some of that out. As we pull back up into the skull, and then you can get some of that red. And in here. I'll use a little bit of purple towards the base. Still do a little bit more of that black, just very, very light pressure. Don't forget the ears. And then again, that purple, so. Hope that helps. If you want to erase some things, just keep in mind, kneaded eraser is great, but what it'll do is it'll just smudge. Okay, so instead of erasing that way, you want to press, rotate, lift up your pastel. Once you've lifted enough out, you can erase it this way. And even though it's staining the paper, you still can put pastel on top of that. So that's one way. And then the other way would be to use the touch step eraser that'll also erase out your pastel. And so this is good on areas here when we need to clean up like an edge. Tough Stuff Eraser is great for getting those edges nice and clean as you're working.